We're asking this morning, should we stop sending money and weapons to Ukraine? Well, uh, let's talk to Jorge Martin from the uh, Revolutionary Communist Party and Army veteran and research fellow at the York Institute, Robert Clark. Good to see you both this morning. Jorge, what's your take on this? Well, I think that uh, all military experts agree that the war in uh, Ukraine is lost for the West. Uh, and that the use of these storm shadow missiles into Russian territory will not change that. So I think that the, the permission to use them is completely irresponsible. It's just a provocation and which might lead to Putin uh, retaliating. I think this is completely uh, scandalous. It's not been this, the, 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 the subject of any public debate in Britain. We have not decided that we are going to go to a, a military conflict directly with uh, Russia. And it's a completely waste a complete waste of money. We, each one of these missiles costs between one and two million pounds. And at the same time, we are cutting the winter fuel allowance to uh, old age pensioners. I think this is a complete uh, scandal. And it shows the warmongering character of this uh, government of Starmer. Robert, what do you make of this? Um, I mean, I broadly agree with the first point that, uh, you know, my... Uh, uh, that was just made regarding the lack of a, an overall Western strategy. Like, look, the, the idea of sending uh, storm shadows into Ukraine militarily has great merit, and it has had for the last two or three years. The problem of this is this should have been done, like I said, months or years ago. Um, and that really, really highlights the lack of the Western leadership in providing an actual overall strategy uh, to ensure that Ukraine wins. But when we talk about Western provocation uh, and, you know, warmongering by, by the Labour government, um, this is actually a, merely a continuation of British policy over the last three years. It's one of the refreshing things in Westminster is the cross-bench and cross-party support between Conservatives and Labour that we must support Ukraine as much as we can. The uh, the fallacy in that is we're not supporting Ukraine as much as we can, and we could be supporting them a lot more. We should be. And just a really quick note on the cost of these missiles. Um, they do cost up to £2 million each, but we're talking pennies on the pound with regards to uh, you know the military uh, aid uh, budget that we have for Ukraine uh, as a proportion of the British defence budget and what we get back strategically uh, for helping to fund Ukraine's uh, defence against uh, Russia's illegal uh, war of uh, occupation. I mean, th I mean th that's the basic argument to this, Jorge, isn't it? You seem to be saying, well, this is nothing to do with us. We just shouldn't be getting involved. But do we do we sit back and watch Russia involve a sovereign na in, uh, invade well, a sovereign nation me, and do it nothing? It seems to me that this is a bit hypocritical when we are si when we are actually supporting Israel militarily, uh, and Israel has just invaded a sovereign country uh, called Lebanon and has bombed several other. Uh, sovereign country. So it seems that what, what applies in one case doesn't apply to, to the other. It's a case, a clear case of double standards. Well, I, well no, a, hold, 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 hold on a minute. The, yeah. the, the argument there, and whatever side of, the, of, the, of that argument you're on, you have to say it's that what Israel has done, whether you agree with it or not, has been in, response to, has been in response to attacks in Israel. Israel has invaded the sovereign country of uh, Lebanon on its own uh, accord, and uh, and so and so that that is completely uh, scandalous. And and in fact, the, the leadership of Israel has now just been indicted, charged with war crimes in the International Criminal Court, and we still support that uh, country. I think it's completely scandalous. And I think, uh, unlike my other uh, the, the other guest in this program, I think it is a complete scandal that Starmer is following the same policy, same imperialist policy as the previous uh, Tory government. Robert? Well, I mean, look, it's a complete false dichotomy to try and compare this to Israel's um, campaign against uh, a campaign of self-defense against uh, Hezbollah and southern Lebanon. Um, just one on the ICC claims it's been mentioned, so I'm just going to address this very briefly for the sake of uh, fairness uh, and, and interest to the viewers. And um, this is so misunderstood in terms of um, Israel's sort of rights to self-defense and the, the, the claims of uh, genocide and war crimes specifically alludes to um, the, the idea that Israel is starving the uh, Gazan population. Precisely, We've seen precisely. Hundreds of War, which is a war come into crime. Gaza, which are looted uh, and attacked by Hamas mobs. So, if Hamas 
uh, are so interested in alleviating so, starvation against the uh, Palestinian population, then they would do well to uh, actually ensure those uh, aid convoys aren't attacked by their own fighters in the first place. But just to get back onto Ukraine, um, something that my fellow guest doesn't really appreciate is something that we, you know, we live in a democracy. And um, Labour routinely likes to live in a democracy, but in an absolute the fact, landslide the victory. Fact that we are now in which is true. The fact that oh, we are I now in a state. We voted for Labour. I'm sorry, let me finish my point. We voted for Labour, um, come what may, uh, and Labour campaigned on a manifesto pledge to continue supporting Ukraine. Now, if you don't like that, then don't vote for, then don't vote for Labour, which incidentally neither did I. Labor, don't worry. Well, I, did, I didn't vote for Labour. Uh, luckily, in my constituency, there was a revolutionary candidate in Bowen uh, and uh, Stratford. But the point is that no one has discussed, it's not been discussed in Parliament, it's not been, been even announced publicly by the Prime Minister that we're now in a state of open conflict with Russia. But we're not, knew, because we're not in a state of open conflict with Russia. No, can I just say, everyone knew, Putin had said, if these uh, missiles, which need British personnel to to be operated uh, uh, used in Russian territory, it will be considered that we are in a state of conflict with uh, Russia. You, you may not like that. I, I don't particularly like that. I'm not a friend of Putin, but he said that. And he said now that British military installations uh, are a legitimate target for Russian uh, strikes. So I think that this should at, uh, at least be the, the subject of public debate. I'm completely against, and I'm not sure that the British public will be in in favor. Furthermore, in Ukraine itself, a majority of the population are now in favor of talks, and they are even prepared to concede territory. They have no other alternative in order to that's, achieve that's peace. That's simply not true. That's, in, that's simply uh, not it's, true. It's according to a Gallup. Paul, Gallup is not a communist or a pro-Russian agent. Oh, we, we've seen this Gallup year, just how unreliable public polling According to are. a Gallup, like, can you let me finish my all point? All right, can you, you let me finish my point? Just a Gallup very briefly. Point a Gallup poll two days ago, which you can check online, said that 52% of the Ukrainians want a quick end to the war through negotiations. And this uh, use of uh, ballistic missiles and cruise missiles into Russian territory is sabotaging the possibility of that happening, is making it more, is more difficult for the war to end through negotiations, which is how it will end. Okay, look, there we must leave it, I'm afraid. Jorge Martin, Robert Clark, thank you both.